Good morning, everybody, from Motel 6. We're in Motel 6 in Brandon. Uh, not their usual place to start the day. But if you go to yesterday, you'll you'll understand. And if you watch yesterday's video, you'll understand yesterday was sort of a, uh, a day that got sort of turned on its head. And what we were going to do in the morning completely got changed. And uh, we ended up in Brandon and spent the night here because I've got some stuff to get done today. And it's just cheaper and easier to leave me out here for the night than to get me to drive all the way back home and then drive all the way back here in the morning. So I didn't have a sleeper truck with me, so we made do. These Motel 6s are actually all right. The beds are pretty hard though, that's but that's okay, it's a bed. Uh, $65 a night for truckers, $95 a night for everybody else. So there's a trucker discount. I'm sure there's like a senior discount and stuff too, but I actually didn't know there was a trucker discount. They asked for my driver's license and I showed them and said, oh, you're a commercial driver. Yeah, am I not allowed to stay here? <laughs> like, no, of course you're welcome. You just get a discount. <clears throat> and that's a big discount, 60, 70, 80, that's a $30 discount off a $95 bill. What is it? That's like a 30% discount. Not bad, not bad. So today on the agenda, uh, I have no trailer on me. I'm driving from Brandon here in western Manitoba, north into uh, Dauphin. Got to grab a trailer there that's pretty heavy. Uh, I've got some permits ready for it. I'm going to drag it over to Russell area, Manitoba, just 100 miles down the road. Drop it there and then come back here, grab our trailer that we brought out here. It should be loaded with new stuff and then bring that back to Winnipeg. That's the plan anyways. We'll, we'll see if the plan stays. <laughs> we'll see if it sticks. But <laughs> This is trucking, so you know I'm ready for whatever they throw at me. I'm awake. I'm going to have coffee in just a second. I'm going to go out there, grab some coffee and some breakfast. And we'll be ready to go. You know, this place was so nice. Uh, I didn't want to leave my truck idling all night, right? Especially if I'm not in there. But I didn't want to shut it off either because it's so cold. It was minus 30 when I got here yesterday. So I said, well, if I shut my truck off all night, I'm not going to get it going in the morning. And I didn't have a cord to plug it in because I wasn't expecting to have to spend the night out here. Note to self. Put a cord to plug in your truck and in the cab. Motel 6 borrowed me this cord so I could plug in my truck overnight. I gotta bring it back to the front desk. The guy at the front desk last night, he said, oh, I have a cord, you can plug in your truck in the back. That was so nice. So not only did they give me a 30% discount for being a truck driver, they also made sure my truck would start in the morning. Gave me nice a nice parking spot with like right under the light. Uh, gave me a cord to plug in. And uh, I'm going to go out there right now and grab some free breakfast and coffee. Not bad service. I always go to Motel 6. It's always been my, my go-to because I don't need a big fancy motel. It's, it's not a fancy motel. What is it, like a two-star, three-star? Three-star. I don't know. Five stars to me because they're pet-friendly and pets stay here free. So when Diesel would travel with me on the road, my dog, and I wanted a motel, I'd always go to Motel 6 because pets stay free. And they're all pet friendly across all of Canada and the United States. So they were always a safe go-to for me. And they're pretty budget friendly. So good news. It's going to be a lot warmer today. It's uh, supposed to get up to zero, which is the melting point. So we're excited about that, but it's supposed to be a little windy. But since it's going to be warmer, it's not quite warm yet, but we're getting there. Making sure my grill is open so it can breathe. And as soon as the sun comes up and it starts to warm up, I'm gonna open those other two as well so that she can breathe all day. You don't wanna forget that. I mean, the engine is built in such a way that it shouldn't overheat, but uh, you don't wanna test that either. It does need to have airflow. And usually, if it's minus 30, minus 35 outside, and you close the whole thing off, it's still gonna get enough airflow underneath there to keep everything cool, because it's so cold. But once it gets warmer, it, it will need more direct air straight in there on the radiator. So you guys know what I mean. I'm preaching to the choir here again. I don't know why I do that all the time. Let's get going. Let's go get our trailer, make sure we got all our permits in order, and uh, here we go. Nice, relaxing drive. I got the wind coming out of the west behind me, pushing me towards the rising sun, sort of. 
it's still winter time so the sun i'm pointed straight east right now but we're so far north that uh the sun's over there but in summertime the sun will be over there i know i talk about it a lot but the change of seasons up here like way up here in the north is, is fascinating to me it'll always be fascinating i'll be 100 years old and it'll still still get me every year Cruising across the western Manitoba prairies here. Bob tailing still, cars tailgating me, not realizing there's a passing lane right here. Oh, this guy figured it out. There you go. You can come past me too if you want, but I won't bite. I actually prefer it if they get in front of me. He's been tailgating me for like 10 minutes. Oh, well, I can only do 100 kilometers an hour in this truck. That's where I'm limited at. Actually, it's 99 kilometers an hour, which is 60 miles an hour. So I'm one of those limited guys. So I always make it easy for people to get around me, especially big trucks. If they're behind me for a long time, I can tell they want to go faster because most trucks in Canada are limited at 105 kilometers an hour or 65 miles an hour. So they want to go that little bit faster than me. But if I don't slow down, you know, it'll take 10 miles to get past me. So what I do when they pull out to pass me, and I know they want to go a little faster, I slow down every time. Make it easier for them to get past me. Once they're in front of me, I know that they'll be out of my hair. But I only do that once, because if they get in front of me and they slow down, that has broken my trust. And I will never slow down for them again. <laughs> oh, that sun's getting bright now. Beautiful morning here. Beautiful morning. It's a nice warm morning. We're going to see some melting snow midday today. And then tomorrow it goes back down to the deep freeze. Welcome to Manitoba. I got to wash my windshield. up so the truck can breathe because she's gonna be working hard and with this trailer I have a flashing beacon and a light on the back of this trailer that says I can only run this is my turn I'm gonna find our gear and we're gonna get out of Dauphin taking Highway 5 towards Roblin, Manitoba, and then headed south. We've got the grill opened up, the grill cover opened up on the front of the truck so that the truck can breathe, because she's gonna be working hard. I've got a beacon on the back of this trailer that's flashing with a sign on there saying that this vehicle can only travel at 70 kilometers an hour, and that's 45 miles an hour. We're gonna be on a two lane highway where the speed limit is 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour. So I'm gonna be that guy. And there's nothing I can do about it. At least I have that flashing beacon and that sign on the back of this trailer. That is as fast as this trailer is legally allowed to be pulled. So here we go, we're about to make a lot of people upset. I hope not, but uh, I think I got the Mounties behind me right now. <laughs> Everybody be on your best behavior. Sounds good, doesn't it? That is nice. Is that the Mounties behind me? No, that might 
be a private vehicle. I think it's just a private vehicle. Roblin. Roblin the Goblin. I don't think that's their town slogan. I'm pretty sure it's not, but it is now. <laughs> goblin Roblin. I think I gotta turn left here. 83, yeah. It's been a slow moving ride but people have been surprisingly understanding and patient. I guess all the signs and flashing lights on the trailer behind me uh, help people to understand that, hey, this guy's not going this slow because he, he's trying to mess things up. He's going this slow because he has to. <laughs> wow, they need to plow their roads here a little bit, don't they? Yikes. 83, this way. Wait, is this the... Oh, this isn't it. Yeah, this is it. This is this. I think this is it. No, this is, can't be it. No, that is not it. Shoot. Why did the sign say... Problem Goblin. We're coming in from the other side of town now. That was my turn. So I had to go and turn around and come back. Look at this, welcome to Roblin. What does that say, the park something? The parkland. Wow, lots of parks around here? Or is this a good place to come park your truck? The parkland, this is where you come to park. So we gotta go back to our turnoff up there. It looks like a little residential road, but that is actually uh, Provincial Road 83. Or is it Municipal Road 83? It is the road I'm supposed to be taking anyway. Not this one. Not that one. Not this one. Look at all these people living out here, eh? How many of you have ever been to Roblin? I don't know if I've ever been like down this road here. Yeah, see this, uh, this is it. It's uh, pointed towards Russell. Russell. I always think of Russell Peters every time I hear the name Russell. <laughs> okay. This is where we're supposed to go. This is where we're gonna go. See here they have proper signs pointing 83 this way. Coming from that direction, Okay, yeah, it's a provincial road. You see the sign there just off to the right? All right. This is the provincial road. All right. We have another 35 kilometers to go down here. Google says it's gonna take me about 20 minutes. I think it's gonna take a little longer than that. What a neat little town. A nice little area in here, right? Eh? This is the uh, southwestern, or it's the western part of Manitoba, and I'm from the eastern, the southeast, so I don't come out here that often at all. This is almost like a foreign place to me. These are our fellow Manitobans out here, hanging out, doing their thing. Look, that guy's got a three-car garage in town. His garage is bigger than his house. I like it. 
get these houses that are sort of built sort of into the woods like this sort of makes you feel like you're in a cabin in town oh you got the river or the lake right behind you there nice nice area oh we're definitely on the right way now i only got one more turn before i have to drop this trailer off and then bobtail back to brandon These must be the town offices up ahead here. You see our flags out here. The, the red one is the flag of Manitoba and the red and white one there is obviously our national flag. Yeah, district office. Sustainable development. Probably where the parkies are then. That's what we call the uh, uh, with the conservation officers and stuff, the park officers, the parkies. Yeah, I've definitely never rolled through here before. My own province and I'm seeing something new for the first time after driving for 15 years. Thanks. I've seen more of Georgia than I have of my own province. a huge valley. Oh yeah, the road goes up way over there. I can't go faster than 70, even on the downhill. Even though it's very tempting. But wouldn't be going much faster than this anyway, in this season. Not with this much weight pushing me. Beautiful, look at this. Southeastern Manitoba is pretty boring in comparison. There's a bunch of ski hills over there. Manitoba skiing. Did you ever think you'd see the day? Manitoba ski hills, wow. Oh, and we're gonna have to climb this. This is going to be tough. I can't even take a running start at it. I can't go past 70. This is a steep hill, okay. Looks like they got assaulted pretty good, that's good. All right guys, you, I might need you to push, okay? So get your boots on, get ready. Gotta go up this hill and just around the corner, so. Let's just not get stuck on this hill. That would not be good. All right, pedal to the metal, let's go. Let's see what this old Pete's got. Not much, but hopefully it'll be enough. Oh yeah, oh there we go. Somebody coming behind me? Okay, I'm just gonna stay in the tracks then. Oh boy. Come on! Come on! You got this! You got this! Glad I opened up that grill now. She's gonna need to breathe a lot after this pull. Oh boy, what did they do here? Did they forget to salt this section? I hope I don't start spinning out. Yeah, because I'd love to know what the grade is on this hill. Did I miss the sign? Usually they say this has gotta be a 10% grade at least. Feels like it anyway. There's all those ski hills over there. That looks like fun. I never knew we had skiing in Manitoba. Huh. You see, another good thing about being a truck driver, you learn all sorts of things that you wouldn't have known otherwise. I mean, I guess I could have Googled it, but who's gonna Google that? Who's gonna go to Google and be like, hey, where can I go downhill skiing in Manitoba? I don't think it's a very common search. Oh yeah, we got this, we got this. Steady 20 mile an hour, 30 kilometers an hour. We got this. My pyro's getting a little bit hot there, but she's still doing good, she's okay. She's okay. Okay, we're just about there. Last stretch. Almost two million kilometers, one and a half million miles. 
Well, she's still got it. Old Pete's never die, they just switch gears. Got it. Nice. What an unexpected little adventure that was. Huh. every day uh, and buying groceries at the grocery store and not at you know, Timmy's every day when you're on the road it's a lot cheaper to do that than eating out all the time I spent a lot of money on food when I was on the road sure I would try to get as many groceries as I could at Walmart and stuff and as much as you can but there's only so much you can cook in a truck I, you can get fancy and get portable grills and stuff sure but it, it takes time that you don't have all the time so I've been eating out for the past day because I haven't been home yet. I don't have a lunch for today. It gets expensive, but I got myself some Subway, a uh, foot long, and uh, Timmy's coffee, obviously, because all the good stuff is right here in the convenience store in Russell. They got a Timmy's, a Subway, an Esso gas station, convenience store. What else do you need, right? Oh, and there's a beer store too. I mean, I don't need that right now, but hey, if you, if you did need it, they got that in the same building. Sort of like the general store, I guess. You got everything you need right here. Russell. Russell! Do any of you uh, watch Russell Peters at all? The comedian? It's hilarious. He's from uh, Canada. He's from Ontario in the other part of the country. <laughs> I always think of him every time I go through here. <laughs> We have no trailer behind us now. We dropped that off. There was uh, a whole crew of guys waiting there for me already. So I just dropped it and got out of their way because they had to set it up for whatever they use it for. But on to the next mission. We got to go to Brandon. How do I get out of here now? How on earth do I get out of here? Go around here? Okay. See, if I had a trailer on, I would never come in here. get how do I get across the road now well we got to go way over there oh no left turns here or oh and 45 service road this way okay so they want me to go that way okay let's go this way because we want to go that way down that road over there okay I think we've got ourselves figured out here now got a little bit of a headache I think I'm hungry I need a coffee. I had McDonald's coffee this morning. Decent. Obviously didn't do the trick because my head right now is kind of hurting. It's like, well, where's my caffeine? I need my caffeine, thank you very much. That's the road over there we want to go down. So we gotta go all the way over here to get back on the highway. I'm probably about two hours or so, maybe hour and a half to two hours from Brandon. Then I gotta tie the load down. Hopefully it's not too much. And then another two and a half hours back to the yard and another half hour home after that. That's going to be a long day. But Brett and I have some fertility appointments tomorrow. So uh, I don't have to come into work tomorrow. We just have a bunch of doctor's appointments. So at least there's that. I don't think I get to sleep in though. The appointments are pretty early, I think. I think we got one in the morning and then one in the afternoon, if I remember right. But, and we'll be back to truck in the next day. Maybe we'll make a video tomorrow at home, see what we get up to. I think these appointments are like virtual appointments or whatever they're doing nowadays. I don't think we actually go in in person. Some kind of Google Hangout something, I don't know. Well, we'll figure it out. There we go, see? All that work to go way around just to get back on the road. Okay. Ever, ever, no, no, we're gonna wait for Ford F-150 over there and his buddy F-250. Come on, guys. Oh, he's turning, okay. I should have gone. I'm too nice. I'm 
too nice. Oh, that's not a 250, that's a regular 150. Just a different generation. Ford's got some pretty nice trucks. They make some really good trucks. Worthy competition. Worthy competition. Yeah. It's slippery. Yikes. I didn't do that on purpose. There we go. To Brandon. Quarter after five and we're finally leaving Brandon. Oh, and somebody's parked in my, in my lane here. Okay. Okay. It's hard to find a spot to park those those pikes. I think there could have been a better spot to stop than that, but nah, no harm, no foul, right? No, no one got hurt. We're back on the Trans Canada eastbound, headed back to Winnipeg, gonna leave this trailer full of old transformers and stuff in our yard. you on my head quite a bit lately I just I really like this view it sort of gives a first-person view shows you what I'm seeing it's my favorite view so I've been using it a lot I hope I haven't been overusing it but I mean this way I can just look at stuff and you see it you know when I'm checking my mirrors you can see what I'm seeing and uh, I think it, I, don't know, I like it hopefully not overdoing it eastbound and down Loaded up and trucking. Well, eight o'clock, I just got back to the yard here. Just gotta grab my equipment off here yet, but here's the load. A whole bunch of transformers and stuff. These are going into Winnipeg tomorrow, I'm guessing. I'm not gonna be here. Britt and I, like I was telling you before already, Britt and I, we have our uh, doctor appointments tomorrow. So everything is still on the trailer, so that's good to see. It all made it back here. I'm glad nothing uh, was lost on me. <laughs> I stopped and checked uh, a few times. It's a two and a half hour drive. I think I stopped three times to check. Uh, So, I've got to keep my straps, because those belong to me. The next driver will use his own to bring it into Winnipeg. It's kind of inconvenient, I know. But if I don't take them back now, I'll never see them again. So that's just the system we got going on here. It'd be nice if we had little belly boxes or little uh, toolboxes on all our trailers. We only have those on our roll tights. But if we had them on our trailers too, then we could leave all the straps with the trailer. That would be pretty awesome, if you ask me. But eh, maybe one day. We're getting there. We're getting there. 